How to self-bandage your hands and arms to reduce lymphedema. This video is meant to be watched after you have been taught self-bandaging from a therapist at the Princess Margaret Cancer Rehabilitation and Survivorship Clinic. Your therapist may change how to wrap your arm based on your medical history or specific needs. Use this video along with the pamphlet, How to Self-Bandage Your Hands and Arms to Reduce Lymphedema. In this video, you will learn the following. How self-bandaging helps with lymphedema. How to bandage your hands and arms. When should you wear your bandages? Do not self-bandage if you have an infection in your hands and fingers arm, trunk, or chest. Signs of infection may include a change in the color of your skin that expands or spreads in the area of concern. If your skin tone is pale, the change in skin color may appear red or pink. If your skin tone is dark, the change in skin color may appear darker than is normal for you, red, shades of purple, or gray, or there may be no change in color. Feeling of heat or warmth. An unexplained sudden increase of swelling. Pain in the area. Raised skin around the area of concern. Thickness and pitting. Pitting is when pressure is applied to the swollen area, a pit or dimple will remain. A fever, which is a temperature of 37.8 degrees Celsius or higher feeling sick or unwell. If you think you have an infection, get medical help right away. Infections can spread quickly. If you think you have an infection, call or go to your family doctor or nurse practitioner, walk-in clinic. If no walk-in clinic is open, go to the closest hospital emergency department. If you have an infection or other medical concerns, stop bandaging until you speak with the clinician or therapist you saw at Princess Margaret. In this video, you will learn how to bandage the arm, hand, and fingers with layers of padding and compression short stretch bandages. You can do this by yourself or with the help of a friend or family member. This video will show you how to bandage your arm, hand, and fingers on your own. How does self-bandaging help with lymphedema? Your lymphatic system removes extra fluid and waste from your body. Your lymphatic system is made up of lymph nodes that are linked by lymph vessels. Your lymph nodes are bean-shaped organs that are found all over your body. Lymph nodes may be removed as part of cancer treatment. This can cause a type of swelling that is called lymphedema. If you had lymph nodes removed under your arms or had radiation treatment under your arms, breast, chest, or trunk, you may have swelling in your fingers, hands, arms, breasts, and chest. This is because fluid does not drain into those lymph nodes and stays in the area where the lymph nodes were removed. Self-bandaging is a way to help treat lymphedema or swelling. Wrapping the swollen part of your body with bandages helps move the lymph fluid in the direction of the heart and away from your swollen area. When you do this type of bandaging, you will have more layers of bandages on your hand and lower arm compared to your upper arm. Bandaging this way helps to push the fluid up your arm and into the lymphatic system. The goal of bandaging is to help reduce the size of your swelling, help prevent the swelling from getting worse, help soften swollen tissue that feels firm or hard. After a period of bandaging, when the swelling has gone down, you can be fitted for a compression garment. A compression garment is a tight sleeve or glove that is fit just for you to help manage your swelling. Your therapist will give you your first set of supplies. Once you have used your first set of supplies, 
you will have to buy more supplies at the Princess Margaret Pharmacy or online. Your therapist will give you a list of supplies and tell you where you can buy them online. You will need one gauze stockinette to protect the skin of the hand and arm, fluffy padding or foam roll to help keep the pressure of the bandages even, molilas gauze for your fingers and thumb, 6 cm, 8 cm, and 10 cm short stretch bandages, short pieces of tape ready before you begin bandaging, washable marker or pen, and scissors, water and soap to wash your arm and hands, and a towel to pat dry. Your therapist will also provide you with a pamphlet called Know How to Care for Your Bandages, as some bandages should be washed regularly and some cannot be washed at all. If you lose or misplace your pamphlet, find it at the Princess Margaret Patient and Family Library on the main floor, online, or by calling the librarian at 416-946-5383. When you are ready to bandage, be sure that you are in a comfortable position. Being in a comfortable position while bandaging will help you to avoid back or shoulder pain. A pillow under your arm or the support of a tabletop may be helpful. Before bandaging, clean the skin on your arm, hand, and fingers with soap and water and pat your skin dry. Make sure you dry between your fingers to remove all moisture to prevent skin irritation. Check your skin for any cuts or redness. If you do have a cut, wash it well with soap and water. Apply an antibiotic ointment and cover the cut with a band-aid. Then, put moisturizer lotion on your skin. This will keep your skin moist and help avoid itchiness, irritation, and blisters. Rub the moisturizer into your skin so that it is fully absorbed and your skin does not feel sticky or tacky. How to bandage your hands and arms. There are three steps to follow to bandage your hands and arms. Step one, bandage your fingers. Step two, Wrap padding on your hand and arm. Step three, bandage your hand and arm. Step one, bandage your fingers. Start with a thin gauze stockinette. The stockinette helps to protect your skin. It should be washed after every use. Make a fist. You will need to cut a small hole in the stockinette for your thumb. To do this, Mark where your thumb is on the stockinette with a pen or washable marker. Then, pull the stockinette back from your hand and make a small cut in the stockinette where you have marked it. The stockinette will cover your arm just below your underarm to just below your knuckles. You can put a piece of adhesive tape, such as paper tape, on the stockinette and tape it to your shoulder to help prevent the stockinette from falling down when you bandage your arm. Remove your thumb from the stockinette and roll the stockinette back over your hand and wrist to bandage your fingers and thumb. You are now ready to bandage your fingers. You will need two rolls of gauze to wrap your fingers. For most people, the first roll of gauze you will use will be a six centimeter gauze roll and the second will be a four centimeter gauze roll. But this may vary depending on the size of your fingers. If you have small hands, you may use two four centimeter gauze rolls. Your therapist will tell you which gauze roll you need. Wrap the first gauze roll loosely around your wrist twice to secure it. Wrap your thumb first.
Spread your fingers and bring the gauze up towards the bottom of your thumbnail. Start just below your thumbnail and wrap the gauze around your thumb two to three times while pulling the gauze slightly as you move down to the base of your thumb. Your thumb will be covered with gauze from just below the thumbnail to the base of your thumb. Bring the gauze down over the back of your hand and wrap the gauze around your wrist again to secure it. Continue wrapping each finger the same way. Pull the gauze slightly when you bandage your fingers and thumb, but do not pull it hard. You may find you have more control of the gauze roll if you keep the roll close when you bandage. You will notice that the gauze bandage will cover the back of the hand and not the palm. Once one roll is finished, continue wrapping with the second roll. Start the second roll where you left off. If you have gauze left over after your fingers and thumb are wrapped, wrap the extra gauze loosely around the wrist and arm. Do not cut the gauze with scissors. Pull the stockinette back over your wrist and hand and put your thumb in the thumb hole you cut. Step 2. Wrap padding on your hand and arm. Your therapist will tell you to get either fluffy padding or thin foam to wrap your hand and arm. Start by wrapping the padding or foam around your hand, beginning at the base of your fingers, and cut a small hole in the padding for your thumb so the padding fits around your hand easily. Wrap the padding around the palm of your hand and again cut a small hole in the padding for your thumb. The padding will cover the palm of your hand and the back of your hand. As an option, you can put a mark on the padding where your thumb is with a pen or washable marker and cut the thumb holes. You may want to add more layers of padding around your hand if you have swelling in this area. Then wrap the padding around your hand. Try to smooth out the wrinkles as best as you can. Once your hand is covered, continue wrapping the padding up your arm, starting at the wrist, and overlap the padding by half with each wrap. Continue to wrap the padding to just below your underarm or about two fingers below the underarm.
Try to smooth out any wrinkles as best as you can. Tuck in the padding when you reach the top of your arm to secure it. Do not use tape as it may tear the padding. This layer does not have any stretch or compression. The padding or foam helps cushion any bones that stick out such as your wrist or elbow. It also protects sensitive areas such as the inside of your elbow or the area between your index finger and thumb. It can also help to even out the shape of the arm and amount of compression. Bandage your hand and arm. Most people will use three bandages, but you may need one more depending on the size of your arm. The bandages you may use are bandage one, six centimeter bandage, bandage two, eight centimeter bandage, bandage three, eight centimeter or 10 centimeter bandage. Some people may be using a fourth bandage, such as a 10 centimeter bandage as recommended by their therapist. The therapist will tell you which bandages you will need. The bandages come with two small clips. Do not use the clips as they have sharp prongs that may cut your skin. Remove the clips before applying the bandages. Use surgical tape instead of the clips. Bandage 1, 6 cm bandage. Start with the 6 cm short stretch bandage. This will be the smallest bandage. Keep your fingers spread wide when you wrap your hand. This will allow your fingers to move freely when your hand is bandaged. Start at your wrist. Wrap the bandage around your wrist once without pulling. This will secure the bandage. It is important to keep the same amount of tension or pull on the bandage. You can do this by keeping an even consistent tension or pull on the bandage while you are wrapping, or by giving a gentle pull on the bandage at each half turn to keep an even pressure. Keep the bandage roll close and do not pull it away from the area that you are bandaging. This will give you more control of the bandage. Pull the bandage across the top of your hand until you reach your knuckles. Pull the bandage across the palm of your hand, keeping the same pull or tension on the bandage or pulling gently at each half turn. Wrap two to three more times, pulling the bandage across the top and across the palm of your hand. You may want to put more layers of bandaging on your hand if you have a lot of swelling in your hand. Now, wrap the bandage around your wrist and back around your hand two or three times. This is a figure eight pattern. Next, wrap the bandage close to your thumb over the palm of your hand. Make sure the base of your thumb is covered. If you have extra bandage left over, continue wrapping the bandage up your forearm Once your hand is wrapped, make a fist with your hand when you begin bandaging your forearm. This is the part of your arm between your wrist and your elbow. This makes the muscles in your forearm tight and will stop the bandages from causing extra pressure 
when you move up this part of your arm. Remember to keep the same tension or pull on the bandage and overlap the bandage by half with each wrap. Tape the end of the bandage to stop it from getting loose. Check your blood flow by doing the following test. Press on one of your fingernails. Your fingernail should lose some color or turn pale. The color should return after a few seconds when you stop pressing on your fingernail. This means that you have good circulation. If the color does not return to your fingernail after a few seconds, you may have bandaged too tightly. You will need to remove the bandage and wrap more loosely. You can now see that you have more layers of bandage on your hand than you do on your lower arm. Bandage 2, 8 centimeter bandage. Take an 8 centimeter bandage. Check the bandaged area by squeezing the bandages and start the 8 centimeter bandage where the bandage on your arm feels soft. If you are not sure, start at the wrist. You can tape the second bandage directly on the first bandage. Make a fist with your hand when you wrap your forearm. Continue to wrap this bandage up your forearm. Overlap the bandage by half with each wrap. Keep an even tension on the bandage when you wrap or give a gentle pull on the bandage at each half turn. Continue bandaging up your arm with the same bandage. When you reach your elbow, bend your elbow slightly. Wrap the bandage over your elbow while keeping your elbow bent slightly. This will allow you to move your elbow easily when your arm is bandaged. Tape the bandage so that it does not become loose. Check your blood flow again by pressing on one of your fingernails. Make sure the padding or foam roll does not show through at the back of the elbow. Bend your elbow fully and look in a mirror to check that the 8 centimeter bandage covers all the padding. It is very important that the bandage covers the padding completely. If the bandage does not cover the padding, it means that part of your arm is not getting compression or pressure and it may become more swollen. If you can see the padding, remove the 8 centimeter bandage and rewrap your arm. Bandage 3 8 centimeter or 10 centimeter bandage. You are now ready to start your third and probably final bandage. The third bandage can be 8 centimeters or 10 centimeters. A therapist will help you decide what size bandage you should use. Start to wrap this bandage where the bandage feels slightly soft. You can tape the third bandage onto the second bandage. Wrap in the opposite direction to the previous bandage. Continue wrapping up your arm, overlapping the bandage by half with each wrap. Keep an even tension on the bandage by either pulling it slightly as you bandage or by giving the bandage a gentle pull at each half turn.
Continue wrapping to the top of your arm, just below your underarm, and tape the end of the bandage to prevent it from getting loose. Check your blood flow again by pressing on one of your fingernails. The bandages should feel quite snug but comfortable. You should feel no pain or discomfort. It is important to move your arm when it is bandaged. This will help loosen up the bandage so it does not feel so tight. Moving your arm and using your muscles while wearing the bandages will also help push fluid out of your arm. When should you wear your bandages? Wear your bandages for as long as possible during the day and when you exercise. For the first one to two days, wear your bandages for a few hours a day. This will help you get used to wearing the bandages. You can increase the amount of time you wear the bandages each day until you are wearing them most of the day. Your goal is to wear them all day. Begin to wear your bandages at night after you feel comfortable wearing the bandages during the day. It is important that the bandages feel comfortable before you try sleeping in them all night. If you wear the bandages during the day and night, remember to take your bandages off each day to take care of your skin. Take a bath or shower and check your skin for cuts and areas of redness. Put moisturizer on your skin. Let the moisturizer soak into your skin before you bandage. If the bandages slip down or become loose, take the bandages off, roll up the bandages, and re-wrap the bandages again. It is normal for bandages to slip when you are using your arm. Be aware of your body. If the bandages become uncomfortable, try removing them and re-bandaging. Bandaging can be hard to do at first, but gets easier over time. If you are still uncomfortable after you rebandage, contact the Cancer Rehabilitation and Survivorship Clinic at 416-946-4501, extension 2363. The therapist will call you back and may bring you in for another visit. In this video, you have learned the following. How self-bandaging helps with lymphedema. How to bandage your hands and arms. When should you wear your bandages?